In the North Carolina mountains, there is a snapshot frozen in time. It is Connemara, the home of a renowned poet, writer, musician, and man about the country. He was so famous in his time and now that we most often still speak of him simply as Sandberg. The sea moves always, the wind moves always. They want and want and there is no end to their wanting. What they sing is the song of the people. Connemara is now the Carl Sandburg Home National Historic Site. It is alive with memories of this famous, yet down-to-earth man who lived here with his family and his times from their 1945 arrival at this 246-acre farm in Flat Rock to July of 1967, when the man known most as the preeminent biographer of Lincoln passed away. Their home is rich with reflections of lives well-learned and well-lived, for young Charles A. Sandburg, a life of letters that began essentially with his travels around the country starting at age 19 in 1897, an experience that stretched over many years and informed a lifetime of writing. There was something inside him that made him want to write from the time he was just a youngster. If you can imagine a little girl tagging along with her famous grandfather through their comfortable home and farm, this would be Sandburg's granddaughter, Paula, I was just two and a half when I came here, and all I really remember of those very earliest years is just the wonderful freedom of this place. We had the entire outdoors to explore, and much of our time was spent down at the barn or up in the, on the mountainside. My grandfather would be up here working on the rock at the back of the house, and I had a little moss garden that I developed near him and would come up here and play beside him often. And I remember the scents from the kitchens and from the gardens and the canning and the pies and the cakes and just all the wonderful things, you know, that one associates with farm life. But before Connemara, before all the accolades and the Pulitzer Prize for poetry, before Sandberg had matured as a writer, there was time spent drinking in the landscape of the early 20th century, getting to know its people and experimenting with verse on his own. I'm going away for to stay a little while But I'm coming back if I go 10,000 miles There were over two decades as a newspaperman and a romantic interest, 24-year-old Lillian Steichen, a Latin teacher. The attraction was immediate. Love, oh love, oh careless love they had both met at a Social Democratic Party rally in 1908. Love, oh love, oh careless love, you see what love has done to me. The future poet and Pulitzer Prize winner showed his gifts early. He wrote to her, light and air and food and love and some work are enough. In the varying phases of these cheap and common things, the great lives have found their joy. And here at Connemara, we really lived those words out. They didn't have to name Connemara. The previous owner had done that for them. But they did have to make a decision back in 1945, whether to stay in Michigan or move south. My grandmother wanted a milder climate um, to raise the goats and to continue the farming. And my grandfather was very agreeable to whatever she wanted. As long as he had peace and quiet and could work, he was game for making the move. And um, when he saw Connemara and got up on the porch and looked out at the view, and he was sold. The tempo of each day was dictated by the demands of a working farm, where Lily intended her prize-winning goats, and by Carl's writing, which he said was 95% perspiration and only 5% inspiration. To work hard, to live hard, to die hard and then go to hell after all would be too damned hard. My grandfather had very different habits than the rest of the family usually worked upstairs in his loft-like rooms. 
he often worked into the night. And just as he would be finishing up his work in the morning, the rest of the family would be waking up. And sometimes he would even wave to us from his bedroom window up above as we would be setting out for the barn. Those barns were busy. Lillian's mission was to get the best milk production possible from her herd. And she kept meticulous records, filling file cabinets and bulletin boards in the farm office with details of her champions' births and lives. There are still goats around the place, descendants of Lillian's prize-winning herd. They remain one of the farm's most popular attractions, especially for Connemara's younger visitors. Back at the house, Sandberg would arise after some satisfactory amount of sleep and work surrounded by the tens of thousands of books and magazines that cluttered the place. But he would always head back downstairs to join the family at dinner time. We always had dinner together. Often he would read whatever he had been working on that day, which was sometimes difficult for a small child to sit through, but sometimes it was a lot of fun. Blessed are they who expect nothing, for they shall not be disappointed. And he did indeed have a great sense of humor and a great sense of fun with nonsense and just whimsicality. He was quiet as a wooden-legged man on a tin roof and busy as a one-armed paper hanger with the hives. One of them favorite of mine is, I am James Jones. Oh, you are. Take a chair. I am the son of James Throckmorton Jones. Ooh, is that possible? Take two chairs. <laughs> but always, politics and international affairs were of enormous importance to my grandparents. So therefore, it was important not only to read the paper, at least six different leading newspapers a day. The pilot came back and announced that something was wrong with the de-icing apparatus on his windshield. And to listen to the news, particularly the broadcasts of Edward R. Murrow. A Frenchman sitting opposite me leaned over and said, a most philosophic statement, really the basis of the Cold War. The de-icing equipment is faulty, and no one can see where they're going. This is Ed Murrow recording from London. It was at Connemara, where Sandberg kept a Brady daguerreotype of Lincoln beside his bed, that he tackled the enormous job of distilling his six volumes on Lincoln into one. And it was at Connemara that Sandberg seems to have realized several of his life's goals. One was to eat regular, one was to stay out of jail, have what he wrote published, be appreciated and have some love across the American landscape, and sing every day. The farmer take the bull weevil and he put him in the hot sand. The weevil say, this is mighty hot, but I'll stand it like a man. It is my home. This'll be my home. There are said to have been three people Carl Sandburg credited with great influence on his life. One was a college professor, another was his wife, and the third was his brother-in-law, a man noted then and now for his fine, evocative photographic images, some of which grace the walls of their home. Edward Steichen. They seemed to have an instant bond when they met. My grandfather said that the photographs that Uncle Ed took of him gave glimpses into his soul that no one else even guessed were there. The montage photographs were taken after the final editing of the Lincoln books were put to bed in New York. So there is a great feeling of relief on his face and of release as well. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful series of photographs. In 1968, Mrs. Sandberg sold their land to the National Park Service and donated the contents of their home and barn for preservation as the Carl Sandberg Home National Historic Site. So when we walk through this door, 
going to see the house as if the sandbirds are simply taking a walk or in the garden. It's like a time capsule. We hear many visitors say, you know, I look around the house and this could be my grandparents' house. You know, I feel really comfortable here. You know, the, the comfy chairs, the orange crate with the typewriter on it, and especially looking in the kitchen, you know, all the appliances. It's a snapshot, a window of the 1950s. Really here at Connemara, to a certain extent, he found the peace and quiet that I think he sought, particularly at that time of life. He said, a man must find time for himself. Time is what we spend our lives with. If we are not careful, we find others spending it for us. It is necessary now and then for a man to go away by himself and experience loneliness, to sit on a rock in the forest and to ask of himself, who am I? And where have I been? And where am I going? If one is not careful, one allows diversions to take up one's time, the stuff of life. And I think here at Connemara, he very much found the peace to reflect and decide what he wanted for the remainder of his life.